Hey guys, happy Force Friday. Now, I went out and did a little bit of toy hunting today. I suspected that the pickings were going to be slim, and as you'll see, I was proven correct. I went to one shopping centre where they had a big W department store, a Target, a Toy World, and a Zing Pop Culture. The only store that had any of the new product in stock was Zing Pop Culture, and I didn't get there till I think it was mid-afternoon, 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so... I think uh, a lot of it was gone by the time I got there. Um, if they had any Black Series, that was all gone by the time I got there. Most of the Vintage Collection stuff was gone by the time I got there. The, sorry about the glare on the cabinet. I think that was meant to be a Hyper Real Darth Vader. Couldn't really get a good look at him. They did have a Skiff, Tatooine Skiff, for 80 bucks, which is not a bad price. They also had the Vintage Collection... Luke X-Wing, which is what I really wanted, but it was $200. 200 bucks. Um, I don't want to offend anyone who who picked one up for 200 uh, but as far as I'm concerned, that's just uh, way, way too high. And then they had a few vintage collection bits and pieces left over. Alright, now I did manage to pick up Wave 22 of the Black Series. Uh, because I pre-ordered this for Outer and Collectibles a couple of months ago so at least turned up today so Aussie collectors if you're looking for Black Series Wave 22 head on over to outerincollectibles.com.au uh, didn't receive the vintage collection for some reason I'm not sure why hopefully they'll turn up early next week okay I'll give you a closer look at each figure from the wave in their boxes and then I'll crack open a couple of fi figures to give you a closer look at them so first up we've got Supreme Leader this time around Kylo Ren and as I said in a previous video, looks like he's glued his helmet back together with red with red super glue. And here's a look at the back of the box. Of course, he's number ninety, and there's a brief description of the character there, which you can pause and have a read of if you'd like. Number one, uh, number one, number ninety-one is Ray and Dio. So it appears that. Ray's a, a fickle young lady. She's given BB-8 the flick and um, has taken on a new droid. Uh, I don't know about that likeness for Daisy Ridley. Photo real looks nice, but I don't know about the uh, the likeness. That image either. Here is the back of the box with the character descriptions if you are interested. Next up at number 92 we have the Sith Trooper. And I have to say, I do like this trooper design. I like it a lot more than the um, the regular First Order Stormtrooper design. He looks very cool. I'm uh, fascinated to know how many of these guys we'll see. Uh, you can see that on the helmet design. I like the uh, that sort of nose piece. It looks a bit sort of reminiscent of a, of a Death Trooper. And here is the Sith Trooper character description. Number 93 is a character called Cal Kestes, I believe that's how you pronounce the name, uh, from the game, the video game Jedi Fallen Order. I know nothing about this character, I know nothing about the game. Um, yeah, and apparently he comes with an annoying little droid as well. So here is the Cal Kestes character description what was he a Jedi Jedi at Padawan in the Clone Wars he escaped Order 66 and wants to restart the Jedi Order interesting okay we're halfway there folks next up we have the Mandalorian the character that I or figure that I was most looking forward to he is number 94 yes the the figure I was most looking forward to from this wave for sure as I'm sure a lot of people were thinking the same and here is the Mandalorian's character description Now we have the second sister Inquisitor. Of course, we saw the what was it? The seventh sister Inquisitor in Star Wars Rebels. So very cool to see another one of these Inquisitors, Inquisitors. Uh, also a character from the Jedi Fallen Order video game. And of course, she is number ninety-five. And here is her character description. Number 96 is the Offworld Jawa. I'm going to crack this guy out of his box and give you a closer look at him. 
Very interested to see how he compares to the original Jawa. And here's the Jawa description. And then finally we have a First Order Stormtrooper. Now he appears to have the same gear that the Riot Control Stormtrooper from the, the Force Awakens had. But he's just called First Order Stormtrooper, so I'm not sure what's going on there. And then here is the First Order Stormtrooper character description for your reading pleasure. Okay, the Offbell Jar is the first figure I thought I would give you a uh, closer look at out of the box. And there he is. Uh, he's got the, obviously, you got the plastic hood and the soft goods robe. I normally don't like mixed media, prefer all, all plastic or all soft goods. But this sort of works. There's his, uh, what do you call that? Blunderbuss? I don't know. It's uh, painted in a nice sort of brassy colour. Looks pretty cool. And he's got his other weapon, which um, can fit in that holster there. This is the sort of droid stun gun thing, isn't it? I think that's what it is. It actually looks quite good. The uh, sort of faux wooden parts have actually been painted to look like wood. So, um,. Looks alright. I'll give you a very quick comparison with the original jar, and as there, as you can see there, the uh, that weapon, same sculpt, just painted slightly differently. And this is a real pain in the backside to get out of the holster, so I'll leave it like that. But uh, even you can see there again, same weapon. The hood. <coughs> Excuse me. The hood is, um, if not exactly the, the whole head, if not exactly the same sculpt, very, very slim, similar, just a slight difference around the, the lip of the hood on one side, but yeah, I think I would say that's the same sculpt. The bandolier thing looks to be the same sculpt, just painted differently. I actually probably prefer the way the off-world Jawa bandolier is painted. Um, yeah, I, I do like the soft goods, but as you can see already, I would hardly touch this thing. It's uh, it's fraying in a number of different places. Um, and then the legs are done quite well as well. It's got like wraps around his lower legs, and they've been painted really nicely as well. So, uh, very good. I like it. Now, the figure that I've been wanting to have a closer look at for quite some time, the Mandalorian. And he looks fantastic. The helmet's a little bit rusty. I don't know in the, the shots, the actual images of the Mandalorian I've seen, if his helmet is rusty. It obviously looks worn, but I don't know about rusty, but still, this looks alright. Now, there's a indentation in the center section of my helmet I don't think that that is meant to be there I'm pretty sure that was from the packaging the uh, plastic insert that the tray that he was sitting in which is a bit of a shame comes with two weapons this long rifle type thing that uh, if it's not exactly the same as the one that we saw in the uh, animated part of the holiday special it looks like it was uh, definitely based on that and it looks quite nice. It's got a wooden sort of looking stock and a couple of gunmetal section, coloured sections and then a grey section in between. It's not weathered. It's painted but it's not weathered. You'd think uh, the, the Mandalorian, a bounty hunter, would have a grimy weathered weapon. And then the same for his blaster pistol. Again, it's got a bit of paint on it but it's not weathered either. Got a black grip, but it looks alright. And he does have a nice leathery looking working holster. Blaster pistol fits in there nicely and the holster closes, so that looks very nice. Now for the rest of the figure, I think it looks great. I love the colour palette that they've used. Uh, browns and greys and uh, beiges and all that sort of stuff. Bandolier type thing looks nice. He's got the uh, he's got a scarif stormtrooper 
sergeant or captain uh, shoulder armor there that's very cool looks like he's um, taken his armor from a number of different sources don't know if he can take this cloak off without removing the helmet I'm not prepared to try and uh, force it off and wreck it but yeah looks great the shoulder pads uh, I think they've done this on a few figures now they've made it so uh, the shoulder pads can or shoulder armor can float over the chest armor so that works quite well he can lift his arms up to pretty much 90 degrees there's a bit of a hole in his back there I guess it's for this weapon although the peg is too big to fit in the hole might have to try and trim that down a little bit just get it in there but obviously doesn't look right uh, yeah nice leathery looking accessories again I like how his uh, armor seems to have been sourced from different places different other troopers and that sort of thing on his left knee he's got a Boba Fett style knee pad I think can't quite kick his own butt still not bad articulation so um, hopefully those shoulder pads yeah, sort themselves out yeah really really nice figure and I'm absolutely wrapped to uh, be able to add it to my collection Alright guys, that was my Force Friday. Uh, fairly uneventful. As far as I'm aware, there were no midnight openings or anything like that here in Melbourne. There may have been, I just didn't hear of them, I'm not sure. But uh, I probably wouldn't have gone anyway. Um, picked up two of the figures that I really wanted to get. Uh, I wish I could have got the Luke X-Wing, but I'm not paying $200 for it. So I'll probably never see it again, but such is life. Um, yeah, I hope you guys had a good one and you could find everything that you're looking for. And thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And as always, may the force be with you.